So what another day of Hidden Universal Vault for those that do watch. Thank you for watching. So I thought we'd go ahead and take a look at another another film uh, from the Universal Catalog for this. And this was in my back catalog. So I had this for a while, but I thought we'd check this one out. We take a look at a film from 2002. This stars Kevin Costner. We're taking a look at Dragonfly, directed by Tom Sanyak. Now, Tom Sanyak's a director that I think he's a really good, really good director. He directed two films I covered for, covered on my channel. That would be 2003's Bruce Almighty and 2006's Evan Almighty. So, I think it was 2006, might have been 2005, somewhere around there. This was released 2002. This film, now before I go into the review, I'm going to talk a lot of things about before the film starts. Let's talk about the Universal logo variants. When you do start the film, you get the, uh, you get the E.T. variant. Now, for some reason on the VHS, the E.T. variant plays before the Splyglass Entertainment logo as the film starts. But here we basically get the E.T. variant logo, which is for the 20th anniversary. Then we get a trailer to the Scorpion King, the PG-13 rating, and we get the standard Universal Studios logo, Spyglass Entertainment logo, and the film starts. So, I want to make that clear. I wanted to make that clear before I talk about the film. Now that I got out of the way, what did I think of Dragonfly? Eh, okay. Let's talk about the film. Kevin Costner plays a doctor who basically he has this experience with seeing near-death patients. So, he plays, I think it's Dr. Yeah, Joe Darrow, I think it's pronounced. So, in the beginning of the film, he's talking to his wife over a film. She's in some country, some, she's another doctor who's in the country for uh, some, like, I think missionary trip. Turns out, she dies. That's not a spoiler, that's at the very beginning of the film. So, she basically, he's basically trying to find clues of how his wife died. Well, a bus comes along, crashes down the water, basically, she drowns. So, she meets up, she meets, she, how to explain, he meets up with these people. This movie is interesting because it has a cast that includes Joe Morton. Elsa has Ron Rifkin, Linda Hunt, and Kathy Bates. Now, Kathy Bates, uh, if you can see on here, I don't really can't zoom it up, but right there is Kathy Bates. See, on here, he also spots these things that he doesn't know what they are. What could they be? They're like drawings. Some of his patients, I think he works at, he works at, a, uh, he works at a regular doctor, but is also like a children's hospital at times. So he basically, mid for the film, he walks, and this, this, this young man, this young man is going to, is uh, almost dying. So he wakes up like a big gasp, jump scare, and basically he saves a little boy's life. But here's the thing. He draws these weird, weird uh, paintings and whatnot, but we don't know what it is. So, yeah, this movie is really hard for me to talk about. And there's even moments in it where I called it. Joe Morton's in the film. He's really good in it, though. I really like Joe Morton. He's the actor from T2 and, in, and was in another Universal film, Blues Brothers 2000. He plays sort of like a police officer or another doctor. I, I don't know. This, like I said, is really hard. So, near the end of the film, without giving... Without getting things away, which I'm probably, he goes to the country where his where his late wife died. So mid for the film, he gets these like sort of like a package. His neighbor, Kathy Bates, plays his neighbor. Who, this package from Texas came, but inside it are a bunch of dragonflies. I guess he, I guess his wife had a tattoo of a dragonfly and was really big into those. So he gets this like like this like baby crib or the spinner things you know how they have like the animals and something like that well they have a bunch of dragonflies and he he basically hears things he hears his wife at times his late wife basically this movie i'm just going to tell you right now this is basically just a six cents ripoff 
there are a lot of elements. Basically, they stole ideas from the Sixth Sense, stealing the ideas to make this movie. And I, I don't know. I mean, there was some stuff I called it. I'm like, well, they're either in the jungle. He spots his buzz. I'm like, don't tell me he's gonna jump in the water. Don't, don't tell me he's gonna jump in the water. Like, yeah, I called it. Just like when I reviewed previously the hard way. There was one moment in that I called it. Two moments I called in the film, and when you call a scene, that's not a good sign. Never ever call out a scene in a film, otherwise you got yourself a bad movie. Like I said, this is not bad, it's just not original. It is an original idea, but not that original. So, that's really all I'm going to talk about this film, though. So, the final version is... Should you see Dragonfly? And my answer would probably be... Again, I, I don't know. Like I said, the very beginning started off great. It was really good. I was already enjoying it. Then all of a sudden it went from that, then it veered down a little bit, then it veered off a little bit, then sort of went veered down that way. So it went up like that, down like that, back up, and sort of in the slump, where I can say, if you find this cheap, grab it. It's on Blu-ray. You can probably if you if you're into if you're into the Blu-ray format, this movie's on Blu-ray. But for some reason, every time I see this movie, I always come across the full screen. It's never widescreen. And by the way, the copy I did watch was the full screen disc. I'm not talking about the format. I'm not talking about the the what difference between widescreen and full screen. I'm talking about the movie. So. Dragonfly, a, a supernatural shocker. I'd probably say it's a thriller. Frilling and stunning, according to some critics on the back. Uh, there are some special features I did watch. Uh, the, the special feature I did watch was best-selling author Betty Edel on her near-death experience. I guess that was sort of based on that book, but didn't really mention. I did watch the trailer. I'd watch commentary. A little bit of the making of Dragonfly. There are a few deleted scenes. I'll go ahead and open that up. Get some cool discard. Yeah, by the way, that's what I was trying to mention. That is the main factor in the film called Dragonfly, which, again, kind of a weird film, but that's it. So, I'm going to say this is sort of in the middle like that. Like I said, not a thumbs up, not a thumbs down, just in the middle. It started out like this, then started looking like this, and then it went to this. So that's all I could say about Dragonfly. Kind of really hard to talk about this film because there's a lot of things that they could have fixed in this, but honestly, that's not really, again, it's not bad. It's just a copycat of Sixth Sense. If you want to watch, if you want to watch some similar to this, just go watch Sixth Sense. Skip. <sighs> I guess check it out if, if you're curious like I did. I only paid a dollar for it. I got it from I got it from a buddy stand, so I only paid a dollar for this. Had I paid a little more back when this came out, I'd probably be a little mad. But since I got it for a dollar, I'm gonna let it slide. I had this movie on VHS, and actually, ET variant was featured on the VHS. I think I already mentioned that. But like I said again, kind of goes to the ET variant, but wouldn't be even awesome if it was in the movie. Because it came out in 2002, and E.T. was 20 years old at the time when that came out. That's it. Thank you so much for watching my review. And come back next week, I will have another review up. I'm going to tell you it's going to be a better film. Hopefully it's better than, better than that, but I'm going to leave that hidden until the next Universal film. And thank you for watching this edition of Hidden Universal Vault. I will see you guys next time. See ya.